Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. Election preparations are on in earnest. As and when trends emerge, we pick them up and we bring them to you. Today, we talk about what we learn from the lists that BJP has put out of its candidates. 405 candidates BJP has announced already. Remember, there is 543 in Lok Sabha. In many of the seats, BJP will not be contesting because they have their partners in Bihar, JDU, for example, in Maharashtra, both their factions, the, pro, the BJP aligned factions of Shiv Sena and NCP. So those seats, they will not be contesting as many in the Northeast. So if you take all of those out also, I would say that the BJP has already announced a bulk of its candidates, four or five. Remember the last time they won, 303 seats. What are these lists telling us? Again, remember, there are more names to come, but there won't be that many more. A bulk of the candidates have not been announced. And we can discern some clear trends from these. And these are very interesting trends because once we list all the trends, we can draw a line underneath that and draw a conclusion from that, which is what I will try, try to do. So first of all, winnability. It looks like the BJP this time in its selection of candidates, it's not so encumbered by the idea of winnability or not so weighed down by the idea of winnability. Winnability means sometimes even if it's candidate you don't like for whatever reason, or you might just think this candidate is, is getting too uppity, or maybe this candidate thinks that he or she keeps winning only on their own strength. So you want to put them in your place, but parties still stick by those candidates because they say the candidate is winnable. So winnability is an old criterion, time-tested criterion in Indian politics, I presume in electoral politics everywhere. So if a candidate is winnable, the candidate wins a seat. Not so with BJP anymore because, once again, I draw the line under, underneath this, because the BJP now believes that its MPs get elected because they get votes in the name of Narendra Modi and on the symbol of the party. That's why, see, the winnable candidates drop. Now, it's a long list. I will not read out the whole list, list for you, but I will give you some prominent examples and what is more prominent than what is closer home. So, I sit, I sit in Delhi right now. I sit in New Delhi 2 at this point on the, on, on the edge of Delhi 6, right? So, it's the heart of Delhi in a way. And from there, from here, looking at Delhi, I can tell you that six of the sitting Delhi MPs have been dropped. Now, in the last election in Delhi, the BJP had not just swept all the seven seats, but BJP had got 56.86% of the vote. 56.86% is a lot of vote. In fact, in two of the seats, BJP might have got a little less percentage, but that's Chandni Chowk 52.94, so say 53, and Northeast Delhi again 54. So that was in fact on the lower side. Overall percentage 56.7%, 56.86. Again, I'm rounding off. I round off. Then I don't like it because I like to like to be precise. So even with that, that means BJP's candidates are all winnable candidates. All of them won by large margins. Now, why have they been dropped? I will. Some of this will also feature in the next element. I am going to give you seven factors, seven factors or seven takeaways that we take from the BJP's list of 405. So some of these names will feature under another head as well. And under the first head, however, BJP not being so bothered about winnability in Delhi itself, Pravesh Varma, Gautam Gambhir, Harshwardhan, very popular man in Delhi, soft-spoken, has won multiple times in Delhi in Chandni Chowk. Ramesh Bidhuri, Ramesh Bidhuri, uh, again a popular candidate, Minakshi Lekhi, Hansraj Hans. All six have been dropped. All six have been dropped and new candidates have been brought in. Similarly, you can look around the country and you can see many popular candidates or candidates 
who were who you could say were sure of winning have been dropped varun gandhi for example in uttar pradesh ashwini chaube in bihar general bk singh in uttar pradesh all of the in ghaziabad all of these are candidates who a party could be sure that they were going to win and usually if you are sure that somebody will win you say all right you take the seat but in this case in this case the conclusion is that the party thinks that they don't have to bother about how winnable or weak a candidate is unless the candidate is really hopeless or unless the candidate can create other troubles like creating a local dissonance in the party etc they haven't bothered about that and they have dropped these candidates because the party is confident that they can win on their own power once again if i start listing all the candidates winnable candidates they've dropped the list will be too long but ramesh pokhrial nishank the former chief minister of uttarakhand and also or also former central minister he's been dro dropped Nihal Chand in Rajasthan, who's been a five-time MP, he's been dropped. In fact, if you look at the BJP's 303 MPs who won the election in 2019, out of these 90, that is 30 percent, have already been dropped. So that tells you that this BJP is now willing to fight elections purely on the strength of its symbol and its main campaigner, which is Narendra Modi. second the second important takeaway i told you there will be seven the second important takeaway is that many of those who might have used offensive language about muslims minorities or have done controversial things those who have drawn controversies many of them in the past looked like the bjp really loved them because they helped polarize the situation now it seems like once again that's a conclusion i'm drawing the line underneath this takeaway that the bjp's conclusion seems to be that now the environment is polarized enough anyway and they have their voters on one side and that side is much more numerous so they don't need these people who create immediate controversies and that's why many of these people have now been dropped i can i can read out a list to you ramesh bidhuri in delhi he's the one remember in lok sabha he had taunted and insulted danish ali then bsp mp now in the congress party then danishali and he had called him really awful things i presume these have been expunged in parliamentary proceedings all of that was all of that was something that caused an immediate outrage a lot of the people criticized it he is now been dropped he had won by a very large margin the last time he is now been dropped similarly pravesh verma pravesh verma serial of serial offender the son of late sahib singh verma former chief minister of delhi very powerful very popular in his area also commands a lot of the jat vote he's been he's been dropped that seems like a clear message next in karnataka nalin katil nalin katil again former former party chief very controversial real headline hunter pratap simha the headline hunter of headline hunters on issues like this he's out Anand Kumar Hegde again a very popular MP and a party stalwart but yet again somebody who would always make one controversial statement or the other mostly targeting the the minorities he's gone Tejashwi Surya you might say that's counterintuitive that you are saying all these people have been dropped but Tejashwi Surya has been retained because he's the one who used to hit these headlines all the time but look at his track record for about 2 years now he's been completely silent on these issues if anything he has worked extra hard to keep a clean slate over the past couple of years and that looks like the reason he's been retained some of the other usual suspects who you might have thought because now that i'm saying this you will say but what about so and so what about so and so you will say giriraj singh has been retained anurag thakur has been retained desh desh ke gaddaron ko dash 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 Once again, look at their track record. Since 2019-20, generally, because because between 2019 and 20, there was Lok Sabha election, and Delhi state election, and also the Shahin Bagh anti-CAA protests as well. Two other exceptions like these, but they follow the same rule of having cleaned up their act in the last three or four years. That is Sakshi Maharaj in Uttar Pradesh, and also Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti. And Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti, who earned her instant. in fame or fame you can choose your expression depending on which side you are on by using the expression during delhi elections of 2014 you can make a choice between ramzade that is the offspring or children of ram and bleep 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 
ज़्यादा आई विल नॉट इवन अटर दैट वर्ड इन पोलाइट कंपनी एंड ऑन कैमरा शी हैज ऑल्सो जनरली केप्ट हर एक्ट क्लीन लेटली साक्षी महाराज ही नॉट अटैकिंग मुस्लिम lately although he's been in other parties as well he's not just because he's a sadhu or looks like a sadhu i'm not sure how much of a sadhu he is but he's not only particularly been with the bjp wo bhi aisa sadhu hai jisne ghatkar ka pani piya hai he's been there done that also this has been a way for the bjp for the modi cha bjp also to put some people on the sidelines this approach narottam mishra madhya pradesh for example he was a headline hunter champion headline hunter remember when shivraj singh chauhan was chief minister right he lost his assembly election now he has not been given parliament as well so he is now looking at some long period in in the wilderness so once again just because he made controversial statements all the time he tried to compete in fact with yogi adityanath in many ways he is now down and out and most important of the exclusions right i have deliberately kept it for the end that is pragya singh thakur you know our maligaon cases those cases are still carrying on but in our legal system you can turn this tap on and off sometimes the burner can come on sometimes the burner can be put down some sometimes it can be put out for a few years probably that's the situation with her she was fielded the last time she became an mp she also made those statements about mahatma gandhi which then prime minister modi said had caused him a deep sense of hurt she is not been fielded again this time that's his signal as well but once again all of these also amount to what we had said earlier which is that this bjp now thinks that it does not owe anything to any of these people that it does not even need to send, send a thank you note by way of a lok sabha ticket because these are all seats where they think they are going to win uttar pradesh rajasthan madhya pradesh Gujarat they think they are going to win most of these seats so these tickets are like gifts of these seats and they think now they they don't and they think now that they don't owe these seats to any of these people because they've been used and discarded which brings us to the third point the third takeaway is the turn codes so bjp no longer has any shyness about turn codes you can see that nabin jindal formerly congress mp he's just joined the bjp within 24 hours he got his ticket for lok sabha there are others sita soren in jharkhand sister in law himant soren joined the bjp within 48 hours got her ticket there are many others in fact in haryana of the 10 candidates bjp is fielded only 3 happen to be bjp natives all the others are borrowed some from the congress party as well including ashok tawar who only recently joined the bjp ashok tawar by the way was one of the young leaders picked up by rahul gandhi to rebuild this party for the future he is a dalit he was made chief of the party in the state by rahul gandhi and then got estranged and left he recently joined the bjp and he's got a bjp ticket as well in jharkhand itself there is madhu koda's wife madhu koda who is a who is a corruption convict he spent quite a bit of time in jail jitin prasada is a well known case but that defection took place some time back he's been fielded we know that we know that jyotiraditya sindhya has been fielded but those are slightly older defections that's the reason we are not putting them in the same category as say navin jindal ashok tambar and some of the others now champion of the turn codes for example arjun singh this is not an arjun singh in the hindi heartland some place this is arjun singh in west bengal arjun singh used to be somebody with tmc he left tmc joined the bjp in fact he defeated dinesh trivedi in lok sabha elections then he came back to tmc and he's come back to bjp now and he's got a ticket again from the bjp and then you can go on and on with the list even to give you a little factoid arun govil who played lord ram in the big famous tele serial he's now got the bjp ticket from merit he started his life as a congress member in 1988 he joined the congress party he also campaigned alongside late rajiv gandhi he is now the bjp candidate from merit that's how where you come from ideological purity no longer matters for this bjp and before i let you go towards the end stay on with me i will also tell you from where does the term turn coat come and what does it mean now next point the fourth point the fourth take away ex chief ministers look at the number of ex chief ministers that the bjp is fielding 
of its own and also borrowed from others. So there is the most recent case, <coughs> Manohar Lal Khattar in Haryana. He was chief minister just till the other day, a couple of weeks back. Then only a little less recent, Shivraj Singh Chauhan in Madhya Pradesh. He was chief minister until the last election in Madhya Pradesh until a few months back, until December last year, that is until about four, four, four and a half months back. Biplav Dev, former BJP chief minister of Tripura. Basav Raj Bomai, former BJP chief minister of Karnataka. Trivendra Singh Rawat, former chief minister of Uttarakhand, also from the BJP. All of them have been fielded in this election as of course, those who have contested elections in the past, former chief ministers, these include Sarbanan Sonawal in Assam, Arjun Munda in Jharkhand, Kiran Kumar Reddy, former chief minister, although not from BJP, but from the Congress party. And then if you are really stretching the point, even Rajnath Singh has been a former chief minister, but that's a different category altogether. He's, he's been at the center for a long time. Among the many former chief ministers, the BJP is inducted. There's another one who's not contesting elections this time because he's been given a convenient Rajya Sabha entry anyway. That is Ashok Chavan, formerly the Maharashtra chief minister for the Congress party and NCP, the Congress party, former Congress party leader. Next point, fifth point, corruption and dynasty are no longer an issue for the BJP. Now, all the names I mentioned to you, they all feature, in fact, in the earlier categories I have mentioned, where winnable candidates have been replaced by others, or where we said the BJP is picking so many turncoats. BJP has done so for in the past also, by the way. This, this election's full count is not yet out. When it comes in, I will tell you. But in 2014 elections, BJP had 33 turncoats. And how do we calculate this? How do we define turncoats? People who contested the previous election or until the previous elections were with another party. In 2019, if anything, that number had come down to 19. Looks like this year the number will go up. This year means this election the num number will go much larger. So corruption and dynasty are no longer any issues. BJP's own dynasty is Anurag Thakur, Dushan Singh, the son of Vasundra Rajay in Rajasthan, Yadubir Singh, he is from the erstwhile royal family of Mysore. Raghavendra, the son of Yedi Urappa, Vivek Thakur, the son of C.P. Thakur in Bihar, Bansuri Swaraj, Sushma Swaraj's daughter, Jyoti Mirdha, who's also a turncoat. Besides being a dynast, she's also a turncoat. She used to be in the Congress from Nagaur seat in Rajasthan. She's gone there. Sixth point, this is something the Congress never did when they were in power, for, particularly for 10 years under the UPA. And some of us, in fact, I wrote it also a couple of times, that if the Congress asked its Rajya Sabha Marathis to go and contest some elections, they will see how tough it is to get power and they will not then take power so lightly and they will be more responsible in how they responded generally to issues of governance or political implications of what they said or the positions they took. But the Congress never did that. A.K. Antony did not contest elections for a very, very, very long time, for example. And there were many, many, many others. I should not be reading off names. When I wrote these articles in the past under national interest, many of these people then said, oh, these are personal attacks on me just because I've had five, five terms in Rajya Sabha or four terms in Rajya Sabha. So and so is targeting me because pa my party keeps giving me Rajya Sabha because they need me so badly. However, see what the BJP is doing. This year means, when I say this year, I mean this election. Dharmendra Pradhan, Central Minister contesting. Jay Panda, party vice president and in charge of the very important state of Uttar Pradesh. Piyush Goel, minister for 10 years, contesting for the first time. Bhupendra Yadav, environment minister, a very powerful figure in the BJP, contesting. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, a very visible minister, contesting and that too against Shashi Tharoor in Kerala. L. Murugan, Minister of State from Tamil Nadu, Rajya Sabha member, contesting. V. Murli Dharan, Minister of State from Kerala, contesting. So all these Rajya Sabha members are being sent out to contest. And see the BJP's track record in the last two elections. Even prominent members of the cabinet, Arun Jaitley in 2014, and Hadeep Singh Puri in 2019, they were made to go and contest a Lok Sabha election. They lost. They continue to have their ministries, but that's the party's way of telling, first of all, telling their Rajya Sabha members not to take anything for granted, but also to go and learn how difficult it is to win elections. So you will be a little more grateful to those MPs who win their Lok Sabha seats so you can have, you can have power. And also you will then know 
and also you will then know that as Rajya Sabha members also, you should be as responsible towards your government and, and party as the elected, as those, as those who have to go and seek elections. That is something the Congress never did and the BJP is doing. So if I draw a line under this, I will say this is a clear distinction between the Modi Shah BJP style and the Sonia Gandhi Manmohan Singh Congress party style for the previous preceding 10 years. Number seven, and that's the last point. Number seven, there is a clear southern push. See, for example, governor of Telangana, Tamil Sai Sundarajan being made to resign from the Raj Bhavan and contesting in Tamil Nadu. Suresh Gopi, the prominent actor, he's been put up to contest. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, I mentioned him earlier as among the Rajya Sabha members contesting. K. Annamalai, the party chief in Tamil Nadu contesting. Anil Antony, the son of A.K. Antony being put up to contest. Also K. Surendran, K. Surendran is the party chief, state BJP chief in Kerala. He's been fielded against Rahul Gandhi in Wayanad. So once again, there's a clear southern push. The conclusion is something which I dare say I tried to suggest in a national interest article three weeks back, which I will, which I will share with you. You will find the link with the description of this video where I said that looks like Narendra Modi is BJP right now. Narendra Modi and his BJP are setting up the contest. They are not fighting for 2024. They are, fight, they are fighting the contest for 2029. So they are preparing the South for 2029. That said, turncoat. From where does the word turncoat come? It's a very interesting history. Looks like, from whatever I read up, looks like the term emerged in between 12th and 13th century, like 1199 and 128 or there, thereabout. And that's where in Britain, loyalists of one lord changed their coat of arms for the coat of arms of another lord and that's where the term turncoat comes in of course then there were many iterations of it during the english civil war in 17th century in the siege of corfe castle the siege was won by oliver cromwell soldiers when they turned their coats inside out to match the colors of the royal army so the history of turncoats or the expression turncoat goes back more than a thousand years when we use this expression, sometimes I wonder where they've come from. And since I'm curious, I tend to search for them. And that's why I found them. And finally, something I want to tell you today that a lot of you have taken memberships to our YouTube channel. The membership to our YouTube channel is different from a paid subscription to our website. That costs more, this costs less. However, this gets you a lot of the benefits of being subscribers to our website. Not all the benefits but a lot of the benefits. So one of the promises we made to you is that the members will get all our key videos earlier than the others. That is early access. Sometimes it's half an hour, sometimes it's an hour. Our effort is to increase the gap. So our members get a higher benefit. From now, I know that it, with many of the videos, we've been able to keep that promise, but with some others, notoriously and I'm, I'm the guilty party notoriously with cut the clutter we've not been keeping that promise i now promise you that i will work on it i may not get it right every day because i tend to get late with, with, with cut the clutter but i will try to improve our timings so our members can get early access that we promised and more importantly everybody gets to see this cut the clutter videos earlier because first of all if i finish my work on time then our members can get their privilege of early access and in any case an early publication is good for everybody why should cut the clutter be published at 11 30 or 12 as sometimes happens and i'm sorry about that i regret that barring days on which there is a late breaking story this should not happen and it will be my effort my endeavor now to keep it within a reasonable publishing hour